from the number one best-selling author of Life Rescripted. You're now tuning in to the Year of Purpose podcast. I'm Zephan Moses Blacksburg. Carol McCown is the Chief Executive Officer of Raise Global Services and subsidiary companies, game-changing innovations, world-changing business, and life-changing generosity. Carol is visionary whose goal is to change the world by bringing forth disruptive and innovative technology, building global strategic channel and business partnerships, making business a profitable success, and giving back for world-changing solutions. She inspires business leaders to make positive change in their community and equal priority to profitability. She brings groups of people together from business, government, nonprofits, and citizens to strategically develop solutions to big world problems. Carol partners with companies to create strategies that add social innovation to the DNA of their business model to elevate their brands, increase profitability, and ensure social impact. Carol, thanks so much for being here today. And, you know, I'd really love to get into a little bit of your history and how Raise came to be for you. Oh, wow, Zeph, and thanks for uh, having me here. Um, Raise really is the result of a long career of entrepreneurship. And at the end of the day, I had spent so much time developing business for the profit uh, or for the purpose of profit that when I went through an economic downturn in my life, I realized there was more to life than just building businesses for that particular sake. So I spent about three years just being quiet and um, decided that I wanted to do something with the rest of my life that made a difference, and hence the birth of Ray's. That's awesome. And so I think that you're absolutely right there that a lot of people go into business and entrepreneurship in general because they want to make more money. And they kind of set this goal that, you know, financially, this is my solution. Um, What was life like before Ray started? You know, were you working in the corporate sector or, you know, what did work look like for you? Uh, No, I was not working in the corporate sector. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I'd had probably about five or six startups. Uh, One of them was a global photography company where we photographed sporting events all over the world. And I loved it. It gave me an opportunity to travel, and it was a successful company early on. And um, I enjoyed my life. I was very passionate about my life, travel, my kids, my um, home, you know, even think about, you know, what does the fringe look like on my pillow and those Mm -hmm. sorts of things. And then about eight years ago, my home was wiped out by back-to-back hurricanes. And, you know, I I never thought that I would have post-traumatic stress syndrome or anything like that. But when you see your life sort of floating away and everything in it that's material sort of just wiped out, it has an effect on you. And um, after that, I spent, like I said, about three years just saying, okay, well, what is it that, that God has planned for me? What, what, what am I created for? And um, decided to start RAISE. RAISE means Responsible Alliance and Social Enterprise. And I thought what I could do is take my entrepreneurial skills and my business ability and do something that can change the world. So you brought up a little bit about having some prior businesses. And I think this is a really great opportunity to kind of share with people that, you know, we really get so many chances in life to do what I call pivoting. You know, you can actually (laughs) pivot into a different direction and still keep some of the skills or some of the things that you did in the past, you know, with the new thing that you're moving into. Carol, could you tell me just a little bit about, you know, how do you decide to move into a different business or, you know, when does it become time to close? down a certain business Um, you know some people don't know when it's time to try something different Uh, did you have any sort of not red flags but just you know markers in your own life that were saying hey you know it's time to try something different well I think you have to listen to your own soul and if you are dreading getting up each day and going to work, if you have burnout, if you aren't as passionate today as you once were about what it is you're doing, then it is time to make a change. I mean, we um, often will sacrifice our own soul just to have 
the comfort and security of something that is, is normal to us or every day to us. And in the long run, that is not exactly um, what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be listening and moving into a direction that is, um, empowers us to be all that we were created to be. And I see it a lot. I mean, my brother and I were just at a family reunion this weekend. He's been an attorney forever. And, you know, I, as I look back at his life, I don't know whether he should have ever been an attorney. He's a very creative person. Perhaps he should have been an architect or something like that. But he went into law, and he's just so burnt out. And I said, you still have time to do something else. Just make a commitment to your to yourself and, and to who you are as, a, as an individual and what you're created for. Once you decide that you want to make that choice, then, you know, you get up every day and go, gosh, I can't wait to start work today or whatever it is that I'm doing. Yeah, I mean, you make a really good point there that a lot of people are are just really miserable in what they're doing, and they don't even see it as an option for themselves to go about, you know, making a change and trying something different. And I think we hear this a lot today, you know, especially in the older crowd that's tuning into my podcast is they'll say, well, you know, I have kids now, I have obligations, I have a home and a mortgage and a wife and all of these uh, people and things that rely on me. And it's they kind of make it out to be impossible to make that change and make that difference. But the truth is, and you probably experienced this firsthand, is, you know, everything can be swept out from under you, you know, even if you do everything right, even if you do go and get that safe, secure job, even if you do, uh, you know, go according to plan, so to speak. And I think that, you know, we have to kind of understand that nothing is totally permanent, nothing is totally safe. And the only thing we truly have at the end of the day is ourself. Exactly. I, I look at it like, I call it the three P's, profit, prosperity, and purpose. And if you live your life with those three P's as an equal portion of your life, then you'll have a well-balanced life and you won't suffer burnout and you will be doing exactly what you should be doing. Um I see most people going through life with their passions. This is my favorite sports team. These are my kids. This is the house I have, the vacation that we take. This is the car I drive. This is the brand of clothing that I wear. These are the TV shows I watch. And they're all very passionate about those things. Then they spend the majority of their time making money to feed those passions. And it's a vicious cycle, one thing after the other, one thing after the other. But I'm here to tell you that those things can be removed from from you, whether it could be the death of a child or it could be the loss of of income or it could be that, um, you know, you you break up your marriage because you're spending too much time on the golf course. And it, without purpose intertwined in those things, then I think that your level of being isn't optimal uh, about what you can be or what you can become in your life. And your focus then becomes outside of you and your relationships become richer. And the things that are you're passionate about, you know, take a back seat. I'm not saying that that your kids take a back seat. You just bring them into your purpose with you and it builds those relationships. Um, In today's American culture, I see that a lot. I I have an opportunity to travel around the globe and oftentimes I'll go into cultures where money, they make 30 cents a day. Yet Mm -hmm. I see their purpose so clearly and their passion for life and their, their families even being happier than say a typical American family is. So if we were to take a step back, you know, I, I've certainly looked at uh, there's a great documentary that was on Netflix a little while back, and it was all about living on a dollar a day. And these four guys, you know, traveled into a really poor village and they allotted themselves a dollar a day. But they said, you know, it's so unreliable here. You don't know that you'll make that exactly every day. So they you know, wrote numbers on pieces of paper and put it in a bag. And every day they would pick a number. And some days they got two or three bucks and other days they would get zero dollars and they had to make it last. And, you know, I, I just can't help but wonder where did we go wrong as a society or, or even just, you know, the United States in, I think that there's just something that's going on in our heads that says, you know, we can't be happy until we have more, more and more. 
Well, I think what we've done is we've established that success depends on your financial or your ability to create finances and not looking at the whole person as success. And that is, uh, in the end, something that's going to be very detrimental because that's why we have more and more sickness in the U.S., more and more people obese, more and more people going through divorce, more and more people um, going through depression and having to take medicines for depression. It's, um, it's a false sense of security, and it's a, it's a false sense of worth. And in my own life, I lived there, so I can say this because I've done that myself. It wasn't until I started focusing on others, meaning those less fortunate or people that um, could be uh, just helped just by me spending time with them. Um, Orphans, for example, I traveled outside my bubble and went and spent some time in some orphanages in Cambodia and saw uh, things that I never had, you know, could even have a chance to see here in the United States, or nor did I look for it here in the United States. Anyone to help? I never even considered that. So um, I think we've sort of lost our way. We, we've focused on a life of success rather than a life of significance. And, um, you know, I see the generation behind me, the millennial generation, really more focused on that than, say, my, my group. I'm in my mid-50s, and we spent, I spent 30 years just focused on success. And then at the end of the day, with the success, the perfect two kids, the dog, the yard, the white picket fence, and the perfect marriage that was Barbie and Ken fell apart. And then what? You know, and so... I I learned, and I think everyone in our generation comes across this. You know, we we start looking at relationships that are falling apart, or we see um, that we can't control everything in our life and all of that through money. And um, it's really, really, there's a brokenness there. So if we were to go about redefining this way that we look at success, obviously we've got to pull... I think financial just out of the equation entirely, because I think that's probably one of the big causes for, you know, stress, obesity, and and people just basically working themselves to death. How do we know that our life is a success or, or how do we, you know, tell ourselves that we are successful, you know, without logging in, looking at our bank statement or, you know, looking at our paycheck every week? Well, you know, I disagree with you. I think that prosperity is very important. And I think that we were meant to be prosperous. I think you do reap what you sow more than you sow later than you sow. I think that to be well balanced, though, you have to balance your passion, your prosperity and your purpose there. They have to be equal. One sustains the other. The thing, you know, a life of enjoyment is great, but not at the sacrifice of having purpose in your life. Uh, life of prosperity is great, but not at the, the, the lack of having um, time to relax and time to exercise and time to focus on other people. So uh, it is a balance of all three, but all three are equally as important. Just like a company, you know, my business, my business is to help corporations. Most corporations focus on profits first. Then they move to passion because of marketing and advertising and being passionate about their product or service. And if they leave purpose out of it, then they're going to have an entire company of people with social burnout Mm -hmm. because they don't have any reason for going to work except for those things. So if there's a if there's a balance then you can have sustainable uh purpose and prosperity and passion all of those things can then just add value to your life in an equal way so it sounds like a lot of the principles that you're working with some of these companies on were really you know derivative of your own life experience and how you know you had a lot of things pulled away from you and took the time to rebuild and and build yourself up and i think that you know, you really found the right way to do it. And now you're just taking it to these organizations and companies who could really use this. It's almost like they're craving this because much like anything else, they could have it pulled away from them as well. Is that right? It's absolutely true. You know, 
when I started sort of having dreams and visions about this company, I asked God, I said, God, I want you to show me what breaks your heart and make it break my heart. And we all tend to focus on things that you think would break God's heart, that being, you know, orphans, for example. Well, what else breaks his heart are broken families or or um, business leaders that all they think about is profit and, and they don't have a well-rounded life. So that is as important to me is, is working with business leaders and working with companies to solve world problems, but also help them create a more significant life for themselves at the same time as helping the orphan with their basic needs and coming up with a significant life for themselves. So it's, when you're working with these businesses, you know, it, so I hear that it's it's really important to create a significant life, you know, obviously both for the executives and for the employees. What are some of the things that you're doing in companies where you know, they have people who are just showing up and just going through the motions and don't really see that sort of group purpose for the company. Like, how do we kind of build upon the foundation of the successful business and make it now a business with a purpose and with a passion and with drive? Well, it, it starts with its leadership. You, it has to be part, and I call it part of the DNA of the company. At the very top level, when discussions take place about what's going to happen the next year for profits, what's going to happen the next year for purpose has to be in alignment. And the idea is not that you just do the typical corporate social responsibility thing, which which doesn't mean a thing to anyone in the company except maybe the CEO's wife, who like happens to like the sympathy uh, the the. Uh, symphony and they write a check to it or whatever or what's been going on forever where they just write a check to a big nonprofit and then they make the employees go over and work for a day at that nonprofit that is not what I'm talking about let's look at a law let's look at a um, accounting firm for example I um, my accounting firm I was in there recently and up on the board they said okay they're gonna demand that all their employees give back by going to work at Habitat for Humanity for a day. So I'm thinking about that, and I'm thinking about the guys I know that are the accountants that have sat behind a desk all year long who probably haven't picked up a hammer and nails in 50 years, <laughs> and they're, gonna, they're dreading going to do this. It's not in their DNA to be a builder. Hello? <laughs> in Instead, instead, why not intersect into that accounting firm uh, these the talents of maybe teaching some nonprofit organizations how to use QuickBooks, which they love, they're passionate about it, or they wouldn't be an accountant to start with. Use the uh, talents of the people and what your corporation knows how to do to enable them to give back on work time. And then you've got a, a, you know, a client for, for life in that particular case in the nonprofits that you're helping get their QuickBooks set up. Definitely. Or let's look at, um, at, at Habitat for Humanity. Why not leverage the relationships you know, with the builder supply companies and the builders that are out there and the people that are, do the large construction that's what they know. Engage them and then give them the credit back within the community. Another example is um, the major airlines. I've sat on a major airline. I'm, I'm travel around the world and I'm seeing where, you know, if you buy a, a soft drink that day, they'll give money to breast cancer. Got nothing to do with the airline. Right. Then I sit on a nonprofit board of a company that distributes medicine all over the world, and you know what they're doing? They're out banging a tin cup so that they can buy space on airlines to, to fly medicines to people in need that have a cholera outbreak. I'm like, whoa, 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 what's wrong with this picture? <laughs> I would rather not buy the soft drink on the plane and say, I'm going to choose to travel on this plane and $3 out of my ticket because I gave back is matched by that, that airline to give free space to, to transport these medicines when there's a cholera outbreak that's going to save people's lives. 
You know, I see this happen a lot too. I think even in the local supermarkets and stores, when you're at the checkout, you know, they'll say, would you like to donate, you know, an extra dollar or round up your change to donate to such and such cause. And I, it just, it boggles my mind, especially in particular, uh, Walgreens around here, you know, it's like a pharmacy and one-stop shop for any sort of thing you might need, but their, their actual slogan is be well. And so while I'm at the checkout counter, they're not only asking me if I want to round up and donate to some cause, but behind the cashier is just stacks of cigarettes and stacks of all sorts of unhealthy things. How can you go and say, be well is your slogan when you've got something that has been scientifically proven to harm a lot of people? And the only way you're making up for it is, you know, oh, would you like to round up and give another 25 cents to a charity? Yeah. For breast cancer, which is, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. And nothing irritates me more than going into a grocery store at Thanksgiving, people going and paying full retail to take cans and put them in a can drive from the grocery store. When I personally think that grocery store should be leveraging their buying power with the people who are putting, you know, groceries on the shelf in those stores for a profit that grocery store itself should be leveraging its buying power for that local food bank never to pay retail for groceries again. It it's just a mindset and it makes people at you know in your corporation if your corporation decides to do something like this, it makes them um, feel like they're part of something that's more important than just checking out groceries. There, have your employees take that, you know, open up your store for a day at wholesale and let that food bank come in and you let your employees then take it out and serve at that food bank. Engage your, your team in things that will add value to their life and your leadership. It's, it is the way forward and it is the way forward for us individually. It starts with us individually. It starts with us going into our daily lives and saying, okay, what is it that I'm really passionate about? What am I really good at? What are my skills? How can I apply that to my purpose in life? Your purpose in life was established when you were little Betty. The talents, the skills, the ideas, the the way that you were, were created was created for something. And it can be intersected in your business life, in your personal life, and and everything that you do every day because it's part of you. And so that is what I would like to challenge people to do, not to, you know, it, it, like you were talking about the the young executive that says, I got to pay for my car and I got to pay for my house. And I got to pay for my kids and their private school and all of that. I'm not saying that all those things aren't great. And, and, and yes, you do have to pay for all of that. But you also have time. You have time and you have resources to start focusing, start today, going down that path that adds purpose to your life. Because if you don't, then you're going to find yourself later on in life wishing you had done something differently. Yeah, I think we're really bad at looking at how much time we really do have in the day, in the week, or even in the month. And we really use that as an excuse to not do certain things. And, you know, I I can show you probably an extra hour in your day for anyone who, you know, I I challenge anyone who thinks they don't have any extra time. Uh, I'd be curious to see if I could show you an extra hour in your day to make a difference in someone else's life. And I'm sure you'd agree, Carol, that we could easily find so much more time in other people's lives that they could use to make a bigger difference. Well, and I think what you do is you intersect it into your existing life. Yeah. You just continue to intersect it every day. Wake up and say, okay, what can I do that's purposeful today entwined in my existing life you know, that matches who I am? You and, know, and, you know, I, I raise kids. I am a business leader. I do. I, I, my time is valuable, too. But I also know that if I am not thinking of others and looking after others, then I am going to miss some very valuable thing in my life and who I want to be as a significant human being. Yeah, you really hit the nail on the head, actually, right there. And you were talking about, you know, questioning yourself and how you can make a difference. And a quick little resource that I've been loving lately, I actually have this book, it's called The Five Minute Journal. 
and you do it just every morning and every night there's like little pieces where it prompts you with questions and in the morning it basically says i am grateful for and it has three lines what would make today great and it has three lines and then it asks you to write your own daily affirmation for the day and i think you were so right about that is really kind of asking yourself every morning how you can go about making that difference and adding it into your own life and uh the five minute journal it's just a cool little resource i've really enjoyed that's allowed me to keep that in the back of my mind when i start my day I think that's awesome, and also it, it forces you to be still. Yeah, it really does. It's so important to do that, even if it's just for a few minutes. It forces you to be still and, and to be intentional. Yeah. Well, Carol, this has been a great episode here. I'd love to just talk a little bit about Raise and you know who is Raise for and how people can learn a little bit more about it. Uh, if you could share you know, your website and what would be most valuable to people in coming to check out Raise, uh, that would be awesome. I'd love to. Well, um, first I'm going to tell you about Raise Global Services. Uh, that is uh, our company that advises and works with and builds programs for big for-profit businesses to add purpose to their DNA. Uh, it's www.raiseglobalservices.com, and that's R-A-I-S-E, meaning Responsible Alliance and Social Enterprise. And the second uh, website I'd like to share with you is Raise energy solutions it is uh, an energy company that specializes in energy reduction and energy generation technologies Uh, it's built for both residential and for commercial applications and it is a company that we have developed the technology so that people can become more energy efficient and environmentally friendly but also out of our profits, we give the gift of energy to people that don't have it. Um, 75% of the people in the world waste energy. We're here to help them. And 25% of the people in the world don't have any energy at all. And we're here to help here to help them as well. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing those. Is there any sort of last words of wisdom you want to just kind of throw out there to everyone who's tuning in today? Yeah, I would just say this. Don't wait until you're totally burnt out and broken to start being intentional about finding out your ultimate purpose and going after it. I think that's awesome. Carol, thanks so much for being here today. And I certainly look forward to staying in touch with you. I love it. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, everyone, it's Zeph. Did you like this episode? Be sure to subscribe so that you can tune in next week and tell a friend about the show. If you want access to free training and exclusive interviews on success, happiness, lifestyle design, and adventure, visit me at yearofpurpose.com. Until next time, go out and let life surprise you so that you can live a life rescripted. scripted